Hello, this is Dylan Anderson from Coda Bears, and today I will be covering Epicor REST token authentication in 10.2.600. So, first we're going to navigate to the Epicor RESTful API help page. Um, and to get there, I already have it preloaded here. You would do HTTPS forward slash uh, colon forward slash forward slash the ser your server name that Epicor is hosted on in this case it's dev dash 10 to 600 slash e10 train slash api slash help slash v1 you can also access the version 2 help site with the link in the upper right hand corner of the v1 help page the v2 includes some additional um, methods and stuff that you can um, access that Epicor uses, um, like one of them is the new Epicor functions, which are like custom functions you can create inside of Epicor, and then in the version two of the API, you can call those custom created functions. Anyhow, in this demonstration, I'm going to be showing you how to get a uh, token using the Epicor RESTful services, um, and under the category security and custom. Hep uh, headers on this help page we can see token authentication section here and then it gives you some information to where the bearer token can be obtained from the user from token service so you would click on this link to get some more information and it might ask for username and password this is going to be an Epicor login um, in my situation my login is called Epicor and so now we're on the token resource page here and there's a three different methods post get and post uh, this third post here basically allows you to use the URL to pass in the Epicor username and password and then doing so will return back a response with the token but in our case as you can see here it says uh, use this method for debugging purposes only so I just based on its recommendation I'm only going to use this post to get that token and then the get is the debug token page um, so you can test that token with a get method and it'll basically say if that token is still valid or not and inside of a response so if I click on post here it'll bring me to another layer of this site and basically give me some information um, so about the post method so our request the request body uh, is typically empty and then the response body is going to be um, a byte stream but we're going to use postman it's a it's a cool software that you can use to test uh, restful services like the one that Epicor provides there's a lot of different you know software vendors out there that to probably utilize some type of RESTful API structure. So I'm gonna, this is what Postman looks like, and I've created two new uh, methods, uh, post and get, and basically with the get method here um, is where we're gonna use the token. So the first thing I need is a, is a token. So I pretty much copied this URL um, from this help page right here. So this is the URL that I need to get a token. And then I paste it in there. So there's some different tabs here like parameters, authorization, headers. And headers is um, in your C-sharp code, depending on what library you're using, um, this kind of translates to that, but it gives you a, a UI friendly, no code environment. Uh, version of that and as you can see here I have username and password so to get a token you have to pass an Epicor username and password so in this case it's it's Epicor Epicor for me um, and this drop down has to be on post because as you can see from the help page this is a post HTTP method um, so I put that link there, fill that out. Nothing has to go in body. Um, we're not updating anything. We're pretty much just calling this service with our authorization here. The authorization tab, you can choose no auth or give it some type of auth. Um, in most API calls, 
I'm going to show you a little bit more about this off in, in the Git section here when we're using the token to show you kind of how that works within Postman. But on the headers with the username and password, um, as you can read, I got specify username and password in the header. This is where I got that information to know to create a header parameter for username and password. So let me go ahead and hit send. So once I hit send, I get an access token and then expires in. So that's when it's going to expire. This is the token type bearer. And then this is the actual token. So I can take this token, copy it. I hit control C to copy. That's the equivalent to right clicking and clicking copy. And then I'm going to go into my git tab. So this is another method um, through the REST API. Basically, we are using the customer service to get back all the customers or, or the top five customer records. So this is our filter and we're getting back to top five customers. So parameters, I just have top five in here. When I use the help page to get this URL, um, that would be on the BO section of the Epicor REST API instead of the security. Um, whenever I drop the URL in here, it automatically added the parameters because it, it parsed it from this string up here. Authorization, I choose bearer token, and then in here is where I would choose um, to place my token, you can change the type to basic authentication, and then that would be an Epicor login for pretty much the rest of the API. Headers don't have anything in there, nothing in body. So when I when I click send, it should use this token to authorize this call. So when I hit send, I should get back the top five customer records in my system, and I did. So these are the top five. You can see it down here. And so let's say that I don't have a token and I just have, you know, no auth. Or how about a bearer token? I just enter in like false, a false token. So if I just do that, click send. This is how we know that our token is working because if we tried to put something other than an actual token in there, um, we get a REST API exception. Um, real quick, so I'm going to put my token back in here. I'll click send again. Um, what Postman also does for you, and this is this is really great to know, is there's a code link right here. If you click on that code link, it can pretty much give you an example of what you're calling here inside of Postman um, within these code snippets. So it generates all these code snippets in pretty much every common uh, programming language. And you can copy this code, put it inside your project, inside of Epicor. Um, in Epicor, there is a library that is going. you're going to need to install a custom DLL into the Epicor client folder, which would be REST Sharp, and you can get that from NuGet, like out of Visual Studio, or you might be able to download that as well off something like GitHub. Anyway, that concludes my Lunch and Learn. Thanks for watching.